Hi everyone, um, welcome to the 12th lecture of the series. So in this presentation, I'm going to introduce the third optimization operation on transducer uh, with pushing. So let's get started. So this is where we are currently, right? Um, so what is weight pushing? Well, weight pushing is basically to di redistribute weights, right? It's try to it's an attempt to try to push as much of the weights and aggregate them to the front to the to, to be as close to the start of, of of the transducer as possible. Now, for example, if you consider this path, uh, zero uh, zero one three, right? The weight of this path over a tropical semi ring would be the zero uh, zero multiplied by one multiplied by one multiplied by half, which gives me 2.5, right? Because the multiplication operation is the classical addition. So uh, 0 times 1 times 1 times 0.5, it gives you gives me 2.5 for this particular path, right? If I consider the path below, right, the path below will give me a weight of uh, 0 times 0 times 3 times 0.5. It's a uh, 3.5. So the path on top is 2.5, and the weight of the path below is 3.5. And if I were to weight pushed, right, weight pushed this transducer, transducer uh, we call it push T, right? If you look at the, the weight of the paths, right? Taking this particular path again, it will be 2.5 times 0 times 0 times 0. It gives me 2.5, right? It's the same as above. And if I were to take below, if I take the path below, it will be 2.5 times 1 times 0 times 0, which is 3.5. Again, same, same as the original WFST except that all the weights have, have been pushed to the front, right? As we push to the front. But why? Why do we do this? So, well, many transduction problems, whether it's speech recognition and so on, but basically reduces to finding the minimal cost path. So if you were to, tr you were to aggregate all the weights in the front, right? With, so uh, at the same time, preserving the path weight, right? Preserving the path weight, right? Any unpro unpromising paths will be pruned out early in the search, right? See, even without going to the end, by taking this particular step, I know that taking this path is will cost more than taking this particular path because there's an additional weight of one here compared to this path. So I know that the, the minimal cost path would be this, from zero to one to three, even without tra traversing the whole path. So imagine you have a very long transducer. This will actually speed up your search search time because all the all the unpromising paths are pruned off really really early on right so this is the power of weight pushing so what is the algorithm itself now the algorithm itself uh, may look like it's very mathematical in nature but it is it isn't really once you get the hang of it right so first of all there's basically just two steps to it. First, calculate the potential of each state. And this is the formula that's given. So given a path, right, that starts from Q. So 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 you you if you go to calculate the uh, potential of state Q, you're gonna consider all paths emanating from state Q to the final states, right? All paths em emanating from state Q to the final state. And we're gonna calculate the path the, the weight of all the paths, right? By calculating the weight of the path, multiplying with the the, the weight of the final state that the paths end, end up in, right? So once you have the potential for all the states, then you're going to re-weight. You're going to re-weight the, the initial and the final weight, and as well as the transition weights, right? Using these three expression. Now, um, so this is a transition, and you're going to re-weight the transition, right? The weight of the transition will be re updated or re-weighted using this. You're going to use this particular notation here, and uh, the final the final weight will be will be updated using this and uh, sorry this is the initial weight will be updated using this and then the final weight will be updated using this particular uh, expression now uh, it may look like a handful but if you think about it I want the initial weights to be as heavy as possible and the final weights to be as light as possible so if you think in terms of real numbers right look here you are multiplying it by you are multiplying the original weight by something. Uh, sort of to make it bigger and then for the final weights you're dividing it by something to make it smaller so this is how a a, a, a weight tra uh, would work a, a, a re-weighting would work similarly if you have a, if a weight of a path right weight of a transition sorry what you're going to do is to to multiply it with the uh, potential of the end state and divide it divide it by the uh, potential of the 
uh, initial state all right so this way it it actually tries to aggregate as much of the weight to the uh, front as possible so the, it, it it looks like it's very very difficult but um, I'm going to go through it slowly try and uh, hopefully you can you guys can understand this so suppose I give you a worked example the 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 example that I showed on uh, showed earlier on so you have four states 0 1 2 and 3 right so this e1 e2 e3 e4 they are basically the um, I remove the input and output because weight pushing algorithm only deals with weight so I can just ignore the inputs and the outputs of this transducer and I relabel this particular arrow here as e1 transition 1 e1 and then this this one has transition two, transition three, transition four. So you can see that I I have written down in the um, very the, the 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 notation that I've introduced earlier, except that I've uh, omitted the uh, the input and outputs. Okay, so transition one will start at node state one, and at state it start at state zero and at state one with a weight of one, right? So transition three will start at state one and at state three with a uh, weight one as well. So you can see this. The first step, again, is to compute the potential of each state from 0, 1, 2, and 3. So if I will, so I, I will start at 0, right? And then whenever I consider that, that state, right, I have to consider all paths emanating from that state to the final state. So if I consider 0, there's just two paths here, E1, E3, E2, E4. So I'll call the top path, path 1, bottom path, path 2. So E1 to E3 is path 1, E2 to E4 is path 2. And if I were to consider state one, right, the potential of state one, there's just one transition coming out to the final state, and that's e three. And then if I were to consider the potential of this state, uh, there's just one one transition e four going to the final state, right. And then if I were to consider the final state itself, well, uh, the, I'll 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 leave it on for later. So let's let's start with path, uh, state zero first. So state zero has two paths, right? Path one. E1, E3, that you take E1 and E3, and path 2, you take E2 and E4. So once again, I'm going to compute, I'm going to compute the weight of uh, these two paths, right? So the weight of path 1 is uh, 1 times 1. I remember this is over a tropical semi-ring, and I've written it here just to remind you guys what is tropical semi-ring. So the weight, the, the weight of the path 1 is 1 times 1. Weight of path 2 is 0 times 3, right? And then the weight of the... Uh, the, the destination node in this case is exactly the same for both. It's half, right? So one times one times one times one times half gives me 2.5 because I'm working with a tropical semi ring. So it gives me 2.5, right? And a path a weight of path two, it's 3.5 because um, 0 times 3 times 0 0.5, it's 3.5, right? And I'm going to add, I'm going to add the uh, two weights together, right? Remember, I have to add the weights together. So 2.5 plus 3.5 gives me 2.5, right? Because uh, remember, I'm working over a tropical semi-ring. So V0, v, the potential for the first state is 2.5. Now this looks like foreign. It looks almost mystical. But what are we doing here? All right? What are we evaluating based on this semi-ring? Well, all you need to do is to record the... Uh, the shortest path, the, the, the example that I gave you during the semi-ring lectures, right? Suppose you, you, you start from S to T, you want to find the shortest path, right? This, this, all these weights represent the distances. So what, what are these? I'm actually computing the shortest path between two states, right? So you can imagine this is Q and this is the final state. So what is the shortest path? In this case, I've determined it to be SPCDT, right? So earlier on, by, by the potential, by, by when we say the potential of a state is basically the shortest path of state Q to the final state. That's it, right? And why is it the shortest path? It's because we have defined the semi-ring where we have equipped this transducer with the semi-ring. And when we say potential of the state, we're actually finding the shortest path. So if you were to read certain literatures, they will actually identify potential of a state as the the shortest distance of a state so just take note of that so moving on we calculate we will we'll just finish calculating the potential for the remaining states right so state one will have a potential of a, a well there's just one path right e3 so we just multiply you get 1.5 right and then 1.5 plus 0 you get uh, well 1.5 okay so the the potential for state one is a uh, 1.5 
for state two, it's just e4, right? From two to three, it's just e4. And the weight of that path uh, would be 3.5. So therefore, the potential is 3.5, right? The potential of state two is 3.5. And then we we'll reach the final state. The final state, well, I'll just initialize the final state, the weight, the potential of the final state as the weight itself. So the weight of uh, state 3 is 0 0.5. And with that, I've calculated all the potentials 2.5, 1.5, 3.5, and 0 0.5. Move on to state two, uh, step 2, right? Step 2 is just to reweight. So let's reweight. So I'll reweight uh, the, the, the initial weight using this particular expression. Lambda 0, well, this is this is actually actual expression. So lambda Q will be updated using lambda Q multiplied by the potential of Q itself. So I'll take lambda, lambda 0, updated it with lambda 0 multiplied by uh, the potential 0. Now, so what, 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 what I do is that I'll make it slightly bigger, right? So 0 times 2.5 gives me 2.5. And then the final weight, the final state, right, uh, V3, uh, I'm going to update it using this particular expression. So I'm going to sort of divide it, right? Divide it by uh, the V inverse. So V V3, what is V3? V3 is 0 0.5. And we are working over a tropical semi-ring. Therefore, the, the multiplicative inverse, in this case, the multiplicative inverse is something multiplied by 0 0.5 gives you 0 bar gives you uh gives you one sorry gives you one bar well that that would just be minus 0 0.5 because minus 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.5 gives you zero which is one bar so the uh, the multiplicative inverse of 0 0.5 is negative 0 0.5 right so uh i didn't explicitly write it here i'm gonna write it later on in the next slides so anyways there's a actually a more algebraic approach to this and is is to take is to know that row three has been initialized to to the potential of uh, the, the state 3, right? So V inverse times V gives you the multiplicative identity, which is 0 in this case. So um, the final weight will be 0, right? And then to update, so I've updated 0 and 0 0.5, I update it to 2.5 and 0, right? And I empty all the weights here because I'm going to update them one by one. And then again, using using the first expression, using number 1, I reweight the transition. E1, remember E1 has a weight of 1. So what I do is that I take the weight of E1, multiply the its end state, right? M multiply the potential of its end state, and divide it by the potential of its beginning, uh, the the the, the uh, initial state. So its initial state is zero. So V zero is two point five. The multiplicative inverse is negative two point five, right? So you're gonna add one because that's the weight of uh, E1, and then the the end the destination state is one in this case. So the put the potential of 1 is 1.5. So minus 2.5 plus 1 plus 1.5 gives me 0. And a new weight for the E1 will be 0. Right? Update this. Update 0. Do the same. Do the same. Weight of 2 is 0. The uh, the initial state is 0. The multiplicative inverse is negative 2.5 plus 0. And then its end state is 3.5. Its end state is V2. It ends, at, it ends at 2, right? So you get minus 2.5 plus 0 plus 3.5 get 1. So E2 is updated to 1, right? You update you update E2 with 1. E3, right, if you do the math, you get 0. E4, you do the math. Again, you get 0, right? So what happens is that we're going to update 0, 0, and then we're, we're done. We're done. So before, now I'm, I'm going to put back all the inputs and outputs, and you can see, right, that this is before weight pushing. And after weight pushing, push, uh, we, we rewrite it as push T, over a tropical semi-ring, you get this, right? And once again, I've come to the end of the lecture. And if you want further references, read these two books, right? Speech Recognition Algorithms uh, Using Weighted Finite State Transducers by Hori and uh, Weighted Automata Algorithms by Mori. Um, and if you have been, if you have enjoyed uh, my lecture, I hope to see you again.